Check this out. This is something like the way we used to do it back in the days. We just like grab the record and do a little like. Of course, a lot of people thought it was going to be crazy. They said, what's this type of music you're making? What's this um, hippity hoppity stuff? <laughs> I just hope that they remember where it came from. Yeah, the beginnings of rap go way back to the mid-70s. When street gangs in the Bronx got tired of beating each other down and breaking heads and decided to channel that energy into something more creative. That began a battle for musical supremacy. The first day I gave a party, a big super party, was 1975 in Bronx in the center. And I didn't have to worry about packing it up because all the street gangs was all part of my family. So once I, the word was out, all the gangs came. And from then on, the, the birth of hip hop was born in the Southeast Bronx. One, two, three, four, get it! You can hear the music from blocks away. People would be coming off the train stations, they'd be coming from buses, others would come in cars, taxis, and mopeds. It was wild and exciting. When they heard the beat coming on, and the crowd started screaming, and the girls started getting down, the brothers started getting wild, it was live and funky. electricity from. You can be on the corner. We'll play on the corner. We can get electricity in the middle of the block. We'll play, you know, everybody plug their stuff up. The people here love the way I run my game. They can't wait to see me make the Hall of Fame. Busy B is my name, and that's the fact. And you can't beat that with a stick, ball back. It started out first about boosting about yourself. Um, just calling response, getting the party jumped in, talking a lot of nonsense. <laughs> I was just the MC to uh, rock a crowd and get the party jumping. He had territory. It was like Cool Herc had like the West Side. Bam had like Bronx River. DJ Breakout had like Way Uptown past Gun Hill. Myself, my area was like 138th Street, Cypress Avenue, up to Gun Hill. So it's like we all had our territories. We all had to respect each other. I didn't like the complete records that were out there. It was like it was always the best part of a great record. And that's what I actually concentrated on. You know, going to the intro of that record and keep it going. Going to the intro and keep it going. We took the, you know, those small, small sections of the record and cut it back and forth and extended it to like maybe a 15, 20 minute segment and in turn the rappers would just rap over it. So that's where, you know, we got the term, you know, rapping over the, you know, over the various beats. It was like, you know, just like the natives playing on the drums, but we found our own drums to play with and we call them turntables. And this is part two, what we used to do. And it goes a little something like... When we gave the party, we always uh, recorded what we did. And with the recording of the cassette, it started stretching into Manhattan, into Queens, into other parts of the tri-state area. Myself and Busy B had like the most popular tape ever, I think, in terms of street where uh, uh, we were basically, it was a rap contest and all. Everybody know who Busy B is number one. They said Busy B is number one. And Kumo D happened to be there listening to everybody saying Busy B is number one. And so I just basically said a rhyme about him. And it was like a new way, a new wave 
talking about the person because Homo D went at me with some rap trying to, he snapped on me, he he took me to the mud. Come on, busy P, I don't mean to be bold, but put that all did and all bullshit on the hole. We gonna get right down to the nitty gritty. Gonna tell you a little stuff why you ain't shit. Phase one was having fun, just taking a makeshift set up into a park and just playing the music, how you feel it. Phase two is after the game, so much respect in the parks, taking it into a club. After the particular group had gotten like metropolitan, interim metropolitan acclaim, he was then known as a hero. This was like the high club at that time. It was like if you wanted to hear R&B and hip hop, this was like the cool. This is where all the cool cats hung out at. When the Sugar Hill Gang came out, first of all, it was like who the heck is the Sugar Hill Gang? Where did they come from? And then when you found that they were from New Jersey, it was like. New Jersey's not even in the ballpark. It's like even Manhattan or the Bronx. It's like, what's going on here? September is when the Night of the Light came out. October was Squeegee. And December, Christmas rap on November was that Curtis Blow. So by that time, we knew that, you know, uh -oh, we can make records. Funky 4 was next. At that time, the records were happy, black audio, party, fantasy type records. That's what the trend was. Who's going to want to listen to this dark record? I said, well, I pictured it. It was dark. It was, um... It had a chill through your spine. After we had had our, our real serious differences, we were off the scene for quite some time. Somebody had to fill the void. Somebody. It was these three guys. Um, one DJ, two MCs. The style was different. They yelled, but they were great. They went by the name of one DMC. to the box, just hanging out around here, probably climbing up on the things over there, running sitting out the super. Pro, running from the superintendent. What is life that is the way to be? Yeah. Why hell in the world got you? About 83, 84, but when the MC really came, when they, they produced and wrote their own, most of their own stuff. And they uh, took even old, they took old ideas also, and that became more of a crossover thing. Yeah, we'll never have a band either. They were a band. We do not sing, but we make funny songs. We'll love your whole life, and we hope to live long. On the gong show, we won't get gone. Let's run down and see. Not Cheech and Chong. They looked like everybody else who would buy their record in the beginning, and like everybody who made their record in the beginning, run down and sing. This is a versatile music, and um, that's Run DMC's mission, to let everybody know that this is music and it's here to stay, and it's the most exciting form, most educational, most vivid and visual, and that's, you know, that's the mission we're on. <laughs> Hey,
Run DMC, Rock Box. That record there slammed the whole industry. Run DMC definitely made me feel the rap was there to stay. Kids out here didn't start rapping until they heard Run DMC. Walked his way did a lot for rap music. That was like the first real breakthrough. Walked his way was my idea. Nobody's ever done this before. It'd be a cool thing to do. We loved it. We liked the, the hard call beat. We had to find something to rap over. I like this style because it's um, a lot of electric guitar in it, you know. And finally, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it caught my ear. The song like this, you can't go wrong with it. It's just it's such a happening thing. Mm. Jack. Run DMC definitely broke new ground. I mean, they took rap music to all new heights. At the same time that the music was exploding, stars were emerging, and hits were coming out every week. Do you want it? about with Dougie Fresh uh, being the strange innovator that he is. <laughs> when Fat Boys came out, it was like novelty, some totally different three fat guys, and, and the beatbox with all of that combined. They were definitely the hottest actors. And he said, I like rap, but I don't want to sound like Chuck MC. You know, I want to sound like SOS band. I mean, that's my influence is, is an R&B bass. They made accessible, commercial black music. The answer type of disrespect records or disc records were out before they were records. Uh, the first time it really got popular on Wax was uh, when Roxanne came out. When UTFO came out with Roxanne, Roxanne, and then Shantae came out, and then the real Roxanne, and then it was Roxanne's grandmother, and Roxanne does the beatbox, and it just became a wave. How do you take it to the beat? That's what we planned, but it stood me up. Roxanne, Roxanne. Roxanne, Roxanne. I be your man. Call me the real. Yeah, it's true. You know, a lot of rappers did come to prominence by dissing other rappers. But there was one rap group who didn't answer to anyone, took rap in a new direction, and did something nobody thought was ever, ever, ever going to get big. A white rap group. Get a beat, Steve Boy! Oh, we definitely have our own unique style if you will, compared to all the other groups, you know. You definitely you'll hear a Beastie Boys record and you'll confuse it with anybody else's, that's for sure. You gotta fight! <laughs> 